So far, uh, we've been computing trig functions uh, for angles that are less than 90 degrees. Because we've defined them in a right triangle, 90 degrees of the 180 in the triangle are already used up for the right angle. Uh, but you can compute trig functions of more general angles, which is what we're going to do in this video. Okay, so we're going to talk about more general angles. Um, so what we're going to do is situate them in standard position. Okay, so um, we have them, uh, the vertex at the origin. Okay, and then the initial side along the positive x-axis. Okay, and then the terminal side can be anywhere in the plane. Okay, so here it's drawn to be in quadrant two. Okay, so this is quadrant one, and then it goes counterclockwise. And I don't know why, but they always write them in Roman numerals. Um, so if we, if we think about it, we can always make a triangle with the x-axis. Okay, so that's what this red thing is here. So it uses the terminal side as the hypotenuse side, and then it makes a triangle with the x-axis. Okay, now we're going to talk about this later, but this angle here, so angle theta goes from the initial side to the terminal side. I'm going to call this theta 1. Okay, this is what we call the reference angle. Okay, so that's the angle that we use in the triangle. Um, so it, the reference angle might be equal to theta if theta is in the first quadrant, um, but it might not be equal to theta like it is here. Okay, so, um, but we can still define all the trig functions um, using theta uh, <clears throat> and this triangle. Okay, um, so if the point, if we take a point x, y, it can be anywhere along the terminal side. Okay, so we just take some random point and that's what we use to make this triangle. So this length is x, which is a negative length in this picture. Uh, and this distance here is um, y. Uh, and the r is, of course, the square root of the sums of the squares of the other sides. Okay, so using Pythagoras, it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. So it's the distance from the origin to this point. Okay, and then we define the six, or so this, then the, the six trig functions are going to be the ratios like we had before. So sine of theta is going to be the adjacent over the, or sorry, the opposite over the hypotenuse, but this is for the reference angle theta 1. Okay, but it's going to be y over r. Cos cosine, cosine theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's x over r. And tan is the opposite over the adjacent, so that's x over y. Uh, <clears throat> cosecant of theta is the flip of sine, so that's going to be r over y. Secant of theta is the flip of cos theta, so that's r over x. And cotan theta is the flip of tan theta, so that's going to be x over y. Okay, now obviously this is provided that none of the denominators is not zero. Okay, so if the denominator is zero, then we're going to have to do something else. Okay, so that the r value shouldn't be zero, but the x or y value could be if you're on one of the axes. So let's do an example here. Okay, um, so here we have the angle theta. So this is the initial side and then theta goes like that to this side here. And then they gave us a point on this terminal side. So with that point, we're going to make the triangle, okay, which is going to look like that. Okay, so this is side, this is three. The, the y value here is minus five. Okay, and then the r is the square root of three squared plus minus five squared. Um, so that's the square root of nine plus 25, um, which I wrote wrong in my notes here, which is the square root of 34, I believe. 
yeah and 34 is cannot be simplified okay so we can leave it like that so that's the length of this side here okay um so then we want sine of theta okay so that's going to be so this is my reference angle so it's still the opposite over the hypotenuse so that's going to be negative 5 over the square root of 34. Okay, and they also want secant of theta. So if you want, I mean, you could just use the rule up above, or you could think, okay, this is 1 over cos theta, and cos theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that's 3 over root 34. So this is going to be root of 34 over 3. Okay, now I'm going to leave, uh, no, actually I'm going to do one more here. So we want to find cos of pi and cotan of pi. Okay, now pi, remember, is 100, oops, 180 degrees. Okay, so in our picture, um, so if we have our initial side over here, the terminal side, so for 180, that's the straight angle, the terminal side is going to be on the negative x-axis. Okay, so if I pick any point here, um, so I can pick any point I want, so let's say I pick, I don't know, negative 3 for x, and then the y value is going to be 0. Now here I can't make a triangle. So my x value, my x value is minus 3, my y value is 0. I can still compute the r value. So it's going to be the square root of minus 3 squared plus 0 squared. So it's going to be positive 3. Okay, so then if I want cotan, or sorry, let's do cos first. So if I want cos of pi, it's going to be the x value over the r value. So it's x over, sorry, negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. Okay, cotan of pi is, um, so this is cos of pi over sine of pi, if you prefer. Cos of pi, we just said, was minus 1. Sine of pi is the y value over the radius. So that's negative 1 over 0. Okay, now that's a problem. So we can never divine, divide by 0. Okay, so that doesn't exist. So that actually means that cos, cotan of pi uh, is not defined. Okay, so there, there are going to be, they're going to end up being some restrictions on the domain of some of these trig functions. And here we just found a problem. Okay, so for cotan, uh, we don't want the sine value to be negative, or to be zero, sorry, because it's in the denominator. Okay, now I'm going to leave uh, example three um, for you to do. And let's move on. Um, so to angles, so some angles might be bigger than 360 or bigger than uh, 2 pi if you're in radians. Um, so, but there, maybe they're multiples of some special angles. So what we can do is we can find their trig values by finding what we call the coterminal angle. Okay, so what we mean by that, so we want the coterminal angle that is between 0 and 360. Okay, and again, I'm going to put this in radians, so that's 0 and 2 pi radians. Um, <clears throat> so two angles are in standard position, are coterminal, if they have the same terminal side. Okay, so for an example, um, so let's say that I have, oops, 
I have an angle. Okay, so that's my initial side. And maybe I have an angle that goes all the way around. And then the terminal side is, say, over here. Okay, so maybe that's my angle theta. Well, that's going to be coterminal to the angle beta, which just goes like that. Okay, so they're going to have the same, um, the same terminal side. Okay, so that means that theta and beta are coterminal. Okay, I could also have other co like there's many coterminal angles here. So maybe I could actually go negative and I could go around this way. Okay, maybe alpha goes like that. So it has the same initial side because we're in standard position, but also has the same terminal side. So that's actually also a coterminal angle. Okay, so there's infinitely many coterminal angles um, because you can go around as many times as you want, but there's going to be only one. Um, that's in the interval from 0 to 360 degrees, okay, or from 0 to 2 pi. So that here would be beta because the alpha go is a negative value, okay. Um, and then when you pick a point on the terminal side, obviously you can use that point for any of these angles, okay, and the same resulting triangle. Okay, so this um, is x and that's y. Okay, it's going to be the same um, for all of these angles. So they're going to have the same trig values. Okay, so let's just do one example here. Um, so we want tan of 9 pi by 4. So let's just note here uh, 9 pi by 4. This is in radians, obviously. Okay, is bigger than 2 pi because that is 8 pi by 4. Okay, so that means that this is bigger than 360 degrees. So what we can do is just subtract 2 pi. So that's going to give us 9 pi by 4 minus 8 pi by 4. That is just a single pi by 4. Okay, so this is actually equal to 10 of pi by 4. Okay, now we know 10 of pi by 4, it's 1. Okay, so these two are coterminal pi by 4 and 9 pi by 4 because they're a multiple of 2 pi apart. So that's a full rotation. Okay, another way you can do this, because, um, so this I like to do, um, I like to use a picture. Uh, so, because I'm, uh, my angle is into parts of four, what I can do is split pi into four parts. Okay, so that's going to split like this. Okay, and I'm going to split this pi also in four parts. So each of these parts is pi by 4. Okay, so now to get 9 pi by 4, I just have to count. Okay, so it's going to be, um, let me just get rid of those pi by 4s because they're making things a bit, um, okay, a bit convoluted there. Okay, so this is 1 pi by 4, 2 pi by 4s, 3 pi by 4s, 4 pi by 4s. Now, 4 pi by 4 is pi, so that makes sense. Okay, 5 pi by 4s, 6 pi by 4s, 7 pi by 4s, 8 pi by 4s. And then to get to 9 pi by 4s, that's where my terminal side is going to be. Okay, so that's another way to see that it's equal or coterminal to pi by 4. Okay, so you can always count around the, around the, um, the axes here. Okay, so that, that's going to simplify to 1. Okay, I'm going to leave sine of 420 degrees for you to do. 
Now, um, you can talk about the signs of these trig functions. So depending on what quadrant you're in, is going to tell you what the sign of each of your trig functions is. Okay, so here's my quadrants. So remember, okay, this, let's do it in purple. So this is quadrant one, okay, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Okay, now let's just note r, because it's the square root of x squared plus y squared, it's the radius um, or the length of the, sorry, the the, the distance between the point x, y, and zero, it's always positive, okay? Um, so uh, that's always positive, but the x and y values change, okay? So in quadrant one, x and y are, are both positive, right? Because if I take a point in this quadrant, I've gone positive x distance and also positive y distance. So x and y are both positive, so when I'm thinking about all the trig functions, uh, and in particular, let's just think about sine, cosine, and tan, uh, they're x and y, they're, they're in terms of x and y and r, right? And all those things are positive. So this is going to be positive. Okay, so here, all trig functions are positive. Okay, now in quadrant two, now I've gone to the left in the x distance, the x um, direction, but I'm still above the x axis. So here, x is going to be negative, but y is going to be positive. Okay, so now I want to think, okay, the ones that are about y and r only, those ones are going to be positive. Okay, so that's actually sine. Okay, so only uh, sine is positive. Oh, I should have written that in red so it or pink so it matches. Okay, so here sine is positive. Okay, so cosine and tan are negative because cosine is x over r and tan is y over x. Okay, so when exactly one of them is negative, then um, they're gonna be negative. So sine is positive, but cosine and tan are both negative. In quadrant three, um, x is less than zero and also y is less than zero because now we're below the x-axis. Maybe I should have written it like I did in the first one. So x and y are both negative. Okay, so here, y over r is going to, that's sine, that that's going to be negative. Um, x over r, that's going to be negative, so cosine is going to be negative. So here, tan, which is y over x, both of those are negative. So tan is the only one that's positive. Okay, so... Um, sine and cosine are both negative. Okay, finally in quadrant four, x is positive again, but y is still negative. So you might have guessed the way things are going. Here, cosine is going to be the positive, the only positive one. Okay, and tan and sine are both negative. Okay, now one uh, trick people use to remember this, there's all sorts of them. Um, so they, they write, um, okay, A, S, T, and C. So the one that I've heard, which I didn't leave myself enough room to do for that one, the one that I've heard is all students take calculus um, to remember. So what it means, okay, 
Um, so that's just a way to remember. So all the trig functions are positive. Okay, in this interval, the S, the S quadrant, only sine is positive. In quadrant three, that's the T quadrant, only tan is positive. And in quadrant four, only cosine, the C one is positive. Okay, so you can tell, um, in, depending on what quadrant the terminal side is in, uh, what your trig, val trig values are going to be, if they're going to be positive or negative. Okay, now... All angles um, that are not multiples of 90 have a reference angle in the interval 0 to 90. Okay, so here I mentioned the reference angle before. Okay, so, um, so given an angle, theta, that does not lie on an axis, the acute angle formed by the terminal side, whoops, okay, and the x-axis is the reference angle for theta, okay, so let's just show you a few examples, I'm going to do four, or actually I only need three, um, Okay, so if my terminal side is in quadrant 2, okay, so that's my angle theta, then my reference angle is that angle there. So it's between the terminal side and the x-axis. Okay, it's the smaller way to get there. Okay, if my terminal side is in quadrant 3, Okay, then this part here is my reference angle. Okay, so it's going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. If my terminal side is in quadrant 4, okay, then this angle here is going to be my reference angle. Okay, so that's, we use these to compute the trig functions. These are what we use to make our triangles. Okay, so let's do an example. Um, I'm actually going to do the middle one here and leave the other two for you to do. Or actually, no, we already graphed 9 pi over 4. So let's, I'm going to do 150. Okay, so 150 degrees, so that's less than 180. So that means that it is um, above the x-axis. Okay, so in standard position, it has its initial side on the positive x-axis. And it's 30 degrees away from 80. So from 180, sorry. So it's going to look like, like that. Okay, so this angle here is 150 degrees. And to get to 80, my reference angle is going to be 30 degrees to get to 180, sorry. Okay, so here my reference angle is 30 degrees, okay, or pi by 6 if you're in radians. Okay, I'm going to leave these other two for you to try. Okay, let's see how we use these reference angles. So I sort of talked about it a bit already. So to evaluate a trig function at any multiple of 30 or 45, so multiples of 30 include multiples of 60, so those are our special angles, okay, that are not on the axes, okay, those are a bit different. What we're going to do is find the reference angle, draw the special triangle for that reference angle, and label the side lengths, okay, using positive or negative, depending on the quadrant. And uh, then we can use SOHCAHTOA to find the reference angle. Okay, now if your um, terminal side is on an axis, then just pick a point on the terminal side, okay? It's best to pick the ones, okay? But last time we had one, I picked a three just because I could. Um, and then you can use the ratios just like we did before. Okay, so let's do a couple examples here. Um, so I'll do this first one. So example six. Okay, so 135. Um, Okay, so 135 degrees 
or actually, so this is less than 180. <clears throat> so if I do 180 degrees minus 135 degrees, I get uh, 45 degrees. Okay, so that is my reference angle. Okay, but let's draw it. Um, so it's going to look like, okay, so there's my initial side and I'm 45 degrees away from 180. Okay, so it looks like that. So this angle here is 135 degrees, which means my reference angle is 45 degrees. So I make my triangle, so I pick a point, x, y, uh, actually, so here I don't even have to pick a point. Um, okay, so this is a special triangle, right? So this triangle okay, is, <coughs> excuse me, a 90, 45, 45 triangle. So remember, that means that these two sides are equal. And when we did this, we picked them to have length one. And that gave our hypotenuse a length root two. Okay, so that's one of our special triangles. Okay, so sine of 135 degrees. Okay, now because it's in quadrant two, Okay, that means that the sine value is positive, right? That's our student section. Um, so sine is positive, so this is going to be equal to positive um, sine of 45 degrees. Okay, so sine is positive in quadrant two. Okay, so that's why I have a positive there. So if I was in quadrant three, it would be a negative version. Okay, so here they're actually equal. Um, you can see that if you think sine. Okay, well, actually, let's just leave that um, for later. Uh, so sine of 45. And this is equal to one over root two or root two over two. Okay, so we know sine of 135 because we know sine of 45. Um, okay, so now I'm going to leave 7 and 8 for you to try, and let's try number 9 here. Um, <clears throat> so negative 5 pi by 2 is um, bigger than 2 pi, uh, well, smaller than negative 2 pi, let's say. Um, so I'm just going to do the positive version. So 5 pi by 2 is bigger than 2 pi because that's 4 pi by 2. Okay, so this is going all the way around. So let's draw. Okay, now this one, we're splitting pi into 2. So I'm actually just splitting along the y-axis. Okay, so this is 1 pi by 2. 2 pi, oh wait, sorry, I'm negative, so I want to go the other way around. <coughs> Okay, so if I go this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, so my terminal side is going to be on the negative y-axis. Okay, so that's my angle, so it went all the way around and then ended here. Okay, so what I can do is pick a point, okay, on here, and I'm going to pick the point, so x is 0, y is negative 1. Okay, so that point is definitely on this uh, terminal side. Okay, and then secant, oops, I'm in pink, um, secant of negative 5 pi by 2 is going to be 1 over cosine of negative 5 pi by 2. Okay, now the cosine value here 
is so that it's um, x over the radius. So here, um, I should just write, so the x is 0, the y is negative 1, and the r is the square root, 0 squared plus negative 1 squared, so it's going to be positive 1. So cosine is x over r, so that's 0 over 1. So this is 1 over 0, which is a problem. Okay, so that actually means that secant of negative 5 pi by 2 is not defined. Okay, so it doesn't exist. Um, okay, one more example, I think. Um, so, in number 10 here, so if cosine theta is 2, pi, 2 over 3, and we know theta is between 3 pi by 2 and pi by 2, okay, so what that means, this part here, is telling us theta is in quadrant 4, which makes sense because cosine is positive in that quadrant, so that, that's okay. We want to find the values of the other five trig functions. Okay. Um, so maybe I just, before we do that, how do I know that that means quadrant 4? Okay, so just like we did in the last one, we're 3 pi by 2. Okay, so pi is the flat angle, so I split that into 2, and then I split the flat angle the other way into 2. So 3 pi by 2 is going to be 1 pi by 2, 2 pi by 2s, 3 pi by 2s. Okay, so that angle is 3 pi by 2, and we know 2 pi goes the whole way. Okay, so that means that our theta is going to be somewhere between those two blue um, rays. Okay, now cosine is positive in that interval, so that makes sense. Okay, now we could, so our triangle is going to look, okay, so um, maybe I don't want to use black. Um, okay, so for theta, we're going to have the terminal side somewhere in here, okay, so that's going to be theta. Okay, so that's going to give us this uh, reference angle here. Okay, and we can make our triangle by picking a point here. Okay, and we make a triangle like that. Okay, now I'm just going to make this a bit bigger down here. So the triangle is going to look something like that. Okay. Um, just so we have a bit more room. Okay, so this, this is our reference angle. Um, so we want it to have cos of two thirds. So I can just place those values. So this is the adjacent side, this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse side. So I'm going to force it to have cosine of 2 thirds, so I'm going to call this adjacent 2 and the hypotenuse 3. Because then cosine of that, this angle, the reference angle, is going to be 2 thirds. Okay, so if using that, that means that the opposite side is going to be the square root of 3 squared minus 2 squared. So that's the square root of 9 minus 4. Oops. So it's the square root of 5. Okay. Now we want to remember that cosine is the only one that's positive here, uh, out of the three sine, cosine, tan. So when we start to find the other ones, okay, so sine of theta, uh, we know it's going to be negative. So I'm going to write since in quadrant four, okay, so we know it's negative. And it's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's going to be root of 5 over 3. Okay, tan of theta is also negative for the same 
reason. Okay, and it's going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So it's going to be root of 5 over 2. Okay, cosecant of theta is 1 over sine theta. Okay, so it's also negative, but it's going to be 3 over root of 5. Cotan theta is 1 over tan theta, so that's going to be flip this one. So 2 over root 5. Okay, now secant theta is 1 over cos theta, so secant theta is also positive. Okay, so that's since cosine theta is positive. Okay, so remember when we talked about positive negative, we were only talking about sine, tan, and cosine. Okay, so their appropriate ones will be positive in the same intervals that they are positive. So when cosine is positive, secant is also positive. So it's the flip of cosine, so it's going to be 3 over 2, positive. Um, Okay, so then I'm going to leave these last two examples for you to try um, to think about. And that is computing some trig values at some more general angles. So how we do it using coterminal angles and using reference angles, um, especially the ones that are multiples of our special angles that we talked about before.